Hey, good morning, girls. Happy Tuesday. Um, getting a little bit late start. It is freezing cold here. Well, okay, so it's like 45, but it's cold. Um, I can't feel my fingers, and I'm going to be out here the next morning with uh, my gloves on, I think, um, and a scarf and a hat, you know, just being ready. So good morning. I'm glad you're out this morning. Um, really a, kind of an interesting topic for today. You know, I chose progress is not always visible. And <clears throat> that has a lot of different attachments to that or meanings to that or what it could be. Because see, in business, we're taught that our goals have to be visible, measurable, you know, attainable, all of that. But when it comes to the work of God, sometimes our progress is not visible. Sometimes we get going and we wonder, what is it all for? Why are we doing this? And then, good morning, Kimberly. Um, we wonder why. And that is the biggest question. And I know for me, you know, my biggest thing, and my husband gets, he, gets, he drives, I drive him crazy because I'm always saying, why? Why? Now, last night he was hooking up his, uh, um, what do you call it, CPAP machine, and I was asking why he was doing the water, and, you know, it irritates him. But, you know, I, I've always been a kid growing up that's asked why, you know, because I think it's important that we know the why behind what we do versus just doing it because everybody else is. So I always ask why. So progress is not always visible. So if we're talking about that in business, in business we're supposed to see the results of our, what we're doing. So for example, if we're social media marketing, we should see our numbers going up and interaction going up. You know, if we're out there selling programs, we should see an increase in our pricing, you know, our revenue coming in. So all of that is measurable and visible. However, when it comes to the work of God, it's just like God. God is not, we may not be able to see him and touch him, but there's evidence of him being there, just like the wind. So anybody says, have you seen the wind? No, but I've seen the evidence of the wind because we see the leaves moving, the leaves blowing, branches bending. So we see the evidence of it. And that's exactly how God works because sometimes girls we we get so caught up in wanting to see the difference that we miss the blessing in front of us you know an example is that you know we're so caught up and, and an example for me is you know <clears throat> we have multiple classes going and maybe one class has got a full room and the other class nobody shows up for so what do I focus on? My nature went to focus on the empty room instead of those that were present. And oh girls, I had to cry and ask forgiveness from God because my focus needs to be on whoever shows up, whoever's present in the moment. And God works. Because see, God can't change lives of people who aren't around. <clears throat> and I need to be concerned with those around that want their life to change so see it's just a different perspective we have to take when we look at what scripture is seeing you know we're encouraged hang on i got a a dog that's being annoying um she thinks it's ball time so but anyhow scripture tells us hebrews 12 1 in there we're hearing from from paul that says we're to run the race with endurance that means we don't quit. We keep going. If God has called you to do something, you keep going. I don't care if you're called to go teach on top of a hill and nobody shows up. You teach. Because, see, part of that is building your character. And God is going to bring the people you need. All he's asked you to do was be faithful and move forward. That's all he's asked you to do. He will do the rest. And we may not see the result. An example goes back to the young gal that I worked with um, that was being sold for sex. 
and so that her mom can get her drugs and all of that. You see, I may not see the results of that as I'm working with her, but sometimes we get to see it in the end. Are you mentoring or sharing Jesus with somebody that is just not responding? That's not your problem. Your issue, you need to run the race. If God has called you to minister to someone, then do it. They may walk away and never accept Jesus in front of you, and that's okay. Because, see, God says that we're supposed to plant the seed. He will water it. He will fertilize it. And then someone else may harvest it, and that's okay. But you need to understand that's okay, and you need to understand that what we have to do as women of God is do what God has called us to do, be persistent in it, and don't give up. See, because so many people, even in business, people quit just before they succeed. You know, it, it's 75% of the people that quit business. You know, they started their own business, and they're moving forward. 75% that quit would have seen success the next day, should they have held out and ran the race to the end. Okay? So we see in... Hebrews 12, 1, like I said, we're running the race to it with endurance, and we're meant to, Dante, it's okay, honey. Sorry, they're trimming trees again, so he's not digging them. Um, but run the race with endurance. So Acts 20, verse 24, says we're to finish the race with joy. What does that mean? That means, I know, honey. That means that we're running this race, and sometimes it's hard. A lot of times it's hard. There's obstacles, there's challenges, there's opposition, there's all this stuff that can happen while you're running a race. But the key is you keep running it to the end with joy. Why would you have joy if you're running a race with a lot of opposition? Because if God has called you to do something, he's the one that fills you with that joy. Okay, and joy is different than happiness. We've talked about this before. Joy is internal. That's because of the Holy Spirit. And happiness is something that's emotional. It's for the moment. Okay, so we're going to run the race with endurance in Hebrews 12. 1. And in Acts 20, 24, we're going to finish that race with joy. Then it goes, we look at 1 Corinthians 9.24, and in there, we're told to run the race to win. Now, that's a big one. So when we're doing what we do, if we're out there sharing the Word of God, we're empowering women, we're, I don't know, bringing children, hurting children, that's the word I was looking at, you know, whatever it is that you're doing out there, you need to do it for the win. That means you don't quit. And when you go forward, you go forward knowing that you stand in victory. Oh, girls, how many times, you know, when I look at what I teach and when I, when I mentor women, how easy is it just to throw up your hands? But see, when I go forward, I go forward for the win for Christ. I realize there may be consequences or, or things that will happen. It's not really consequences when you're doing what God wants you to do. It may not be the most popular thing. You may have people that fall away from you and maybe don't want to hang out with you because you've chosen God over whatever they are doing. But girls, be persistent. The endurance, we're told to run. Again, Hebrews 12.1. Run the race with endurance. Because, see, our strength to get through these races is through the blood of Christ. We're not doing it on our own. Oh, Lordy, no. I think about when I get up and I teach and I, I share with people. It's not Robin sharing. It's because I've allowed God to use me in ways to get the message out, to empower women, to encourage women to mentor them you know it's not because that's my nature to go do 
I'd rather sit in the house and make pretty pictures or, you know, do craft stuff because, ooh, that's easy and that's fun, right? But I took the challenge that God gave me and I said yes. And now I may have days. It's not a perfect run, girls. This race that we run is not perfect. There are going to be days where you're gonna sit there in the middle of your race and wish you hadn't made that choice. There's going to be days during your race that you're gonna say, it'd be easier if I just quit. There'd be days in your race where you might even say, I'd have more friends if I wasn't doing this. But my question to you, each one of us will stand before God on one day and answer for what we have and have not done. If God has called you to run a race, who are you to sit down and quit? And see, that's been the question asked to me when I wanted to quit, when I wanted to throw up my hands and take the easy way, because everybody else was. When I wanted to say, it's too much on my plate or I'm too tired. I'm reminded in the gentle spirit of God, what are you doing? You're supposed to be running this race for the end, for the finish, for the win, for his win not ours and I've had numerous times where God has said to me my beautiful daughter which do you choose do you choose this group of people over what you're called to do would you prefer to not make waves or not as I call it stir the hornet's nest instead of reaching the women I've told you to reach? See, when God puts it that way, girls, all you can do is sit there and weep. That, oh, Lord, forgive me for not moving forward with you. What today are you challenged with? What race are you running that you feel like you're tripping over your own feet? Girls, it's okay. You see, our races are not perfect. Our races require us to have Jesus in front. Our races require us to have him carry us across the finish line in some cases. Are you letting Jesus do what he's supposed to do in our life? So my challenge to you today is understand that your progress in ministry may not be visible to the human eye. But we cannot base our results, as they would call it, you, you don't base your results on what you see. You base your results on what God has called you to do. See, because many times, girls, we will never know the benefits of what it is you do. You just won't know. Progress is not always visible. You see, girls, our faith, our ministries may not be business. On a spiritual level, things are measured differently. Because remember in the Bible, God tells us that man looks at the outward appearance while God looks at the heart. What has God called you to do? What race are you supposed to be running that you sit down on the sideline and quit? Maybe you sat down because of your fears. Maybe you sat down because of opposition from other women around you that you thought would support you. Is your, your, the reason you're sitting on the sideline because you got in your own way? Oh, girls, we all do that. Sometimes we're our worst enemy. We get in there and our minds can stop us and paralyze us. If you're sitting on the sideline today and you're not running that race as God has called you to run, ask him why and how do you change it. We've got to surrender to Christ. We've got to be faithful, especially in these days, girls. We're in a days of so much turmoil out there and so many wanting to remove God from this world. 
so many people focus on what kind of power can they get? Who can they control? God has the power. We don't. Our power comes through Him. And without Him, we don't have it. So what are you doing on the sidelines? God is telling us all it's time to step up. It's time to be bold. It's time to be brave. And move in what he's called you to do. If you're sitting there and, and some may be saying, oh, I, I don't know what God wants me to do, then you need to ask him. Ask him to show you what race he wants you to run. Ask him to put people in your path to make it evident to you and confirm what it is you're supposed to do. And he will. But above all, girls, whatever race you're running, you run it to the finish with endurance, you run it with joy, and you run it to win. Because while our progress may not be visible, it is measurable in the eyes of the Lord. All right, have a blessed day, girls. We'll catch you tomorrow. And uh, ask God, what race are you supposed to be running? All right, bye-bye.